Hi everyone, today I'd like to do a review of the new Shani SN600 SN Speedlight. Um, for those of you who don't know, Shani are a relatively new company. Um, they're based out of China. They are making very interesting products. Um, they're trying to compete, I guess, with uh, Yongnuo, which is uh, what a flash I've got here, and also the Nikon flashes. Um, they also do flashes for Canon. Um, the main thing really is that there's a, a huge price difference between the cost of an original speed light and the cost of a third party speed light like the Young Neuros. Um, Shani seem to be making um, a very big name for themselves at the moment with some uh, very nice products. Um, I've been using their SN600N for some time. Um, really like the flash. Uh, they've just released the SN version. Um, which I'll go through some of the features in a minute but um, I just thought it would be good to do a review and compare it against both the SB910 and the Yongnuo 568 so I hope you, um, hope you like it. So first of all um, the box I mean if you've ever bought a, a Yongnuo flash then the first thing you'll notice is the boxes are so much nicer it's um, it, it just looks a damn sight more professional than the piece of cardboard rubbish you get from Yongnuo. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a box, it does its job, but um, the, the first thing you sort of think when you look at the, the Shani is, wow, it, it looks like a nice product. So when you open the box, uh, inside you get a case with the speed light in it and some instructions. Now the instructions, I mean, it comes in Chinese and it comes in English. I mean, nobody really reads it, do they? Um, I'm looking at it for the first time really. Um, looking through some of the features, it says it's got a guide number of 60. Um, we all know that guide numbers are uh, a bit like your car's miles per gallon. They're a little bit inflated, but we'll, we'll test it later and, uh, and see how it does. It does high speed sync, uh, just like the 568 and the SB910. Um, it does slave flash, rear curtain sync, uh, front curtain sync basically everything you really want um, it, oh and it zoom mode goes from 20 to 200 okay so those are the instructions I'll put them back okay oh what's this in here a warranty card oh, that's nice um, you get a one-year wa worldwide warranty now according to the Shani rep um, they are going to honor warranties um, and they'll be pleasant to deal with but you know I've never had to actually send one back but um, one of my quibbles about the Yongnuo was when it went originally I had a 565 and it went wrong um, and I know it's only a cheap product um, almost throwaway prices but um, it went wrong the flash bulb blew after about four months and uh, getting any support out of Yongnuo was practically impossible the eBay seller wasn't interested um, it was a bit of a pain now. Shani have promised to be different, but I've not yet had the need to call on them. So, okay, so let's open the, um, the case up and see. Um, okay, so I mean, I, I'm familiar with the, the, the box itself, um, the speed light itself. Um, I really, really like the Shani build quality. Um, it does feel very solid. Um, Comparing it to the SB910, I mean, the, there's, there's really nothing in it in terms of the plastics. Um, it, it just feels like a solid speed light that would bounce quite easily. I'm not going to drop it, obviously. Um, it's got a, a swivelly head. It's got a little button down the side, which personally I'm not a huge fan of, but, you know, it does its job. It's, the, the SB910 has it as well. Um, you have to push the button in to turn the head, but of course the 568 doesn't. Um, this just makes it easy for me when, I'm, when I've got the, cam the flash on camera. Um, I can just rotate the head quickly without having to faff about, but here sometimes, you know, so it, but there's nothing in it really. Um, in terms of, um, the, one of the things I do like is um, on the Shani they have copied the Canon 600 um, lock it, uh, hot shoe lock so you put it on top of your camera you flip the lever over um, it's a bit like well the the Nikon has its own where you just turn the, the little lever over and turn it back to unlock 
the one that I really, really don't like is the 568 because this has got the traditional uh, screw where you screw it down, it just takes longer. You, If you screw it on too tight, you can never unscrew it properly. Um, when you fit it on one of the triggers, let me reach over and try and grab a trigger. Hold on, it's stuck. Um, see, it just takes forever. Um, you gotta screw it on and then you gotta screw it off. It's just takes time, unlike the shiny where you just do that um, and then you unhook it like that. Okay. Um, what else do you get in the box? Uh, nothing really. Um, some a little hot shoe stand thing, which is nice, I guess. Um, let's pop it on. So, I mean, in terms of build quality. Um, uh, like I said before, um, my first preference would, well, it's joint really. Um, the SB910 and, and the Shani both are fantastic. Um, the 568, it's a bit cheaper. You can tell it's a bit cheaper. It's a bit boxier, doesn't quite look as nice. Now, those eagle-eyed will realize that there's a missing piece here. That's because I have dropped this um, and the little red infrared cover thing smashed off it still works and uh, it still fires like a champ so in terms of reliability i i, I can't really knock young new one on that one you know it has survived um but in terms of build quality i do have to say the sb910 and the the shani 600 are better um in terms of features i mean they all support high speed sync they all support front and rear curtain flash there's there's nothing really um for most people it does all the features you would ever want um, the, the differences, um, let's have a look. Uh, well, both the Shani and the Nikon support um, external, external battery packs. There's a little thing under here that you can plug a battery into. Um, the 568 doesn't. So if you want to um, recycle faster and plug an external battery pack in, then that's not gonna be um, the right choice for you. If you want to do that, you can go for the 565, which is actually a bit cheaper, but it doesn't support high-speed sync. So then you've got a choice to make. Do you want the convenience of um, an external battery pack, or do you want to have high-speed sync? With the Young Neo, you can't seem to have both. Now, personally, um, I like to have high-speed sync. I don't use it a lot, but it does come in handy sometimes. You know, if you're shooting outdoors or something and, you, and you're going over the sync speed and you need a little bit of fill flash, it's handy to have sometimes. Um, that's why I bought the 568 um, and that's why I don't have the 565 anymore. I'd rather have the high speed sync than not. Um, personally, I'm, I don't really use external battery packs on speed lights. They, they recycle fast enough for the way I shoot. Um, other than that, there's not a massive amount of difference. I think the, these have got a sync port on it. Um, I think, yeah, the Nikon has as well. I see that's how little I use them, I don't even know. Um, they, they've both, they've all three of them have got a little, um, the wide angle reflector card and um, the bounce card. Now, for someone like me with no fingernails, um, I find the Shani and the Nikon really easy to get up because they've got a little lip here. I just you pull it out and, and you, there you go. On the Yongnuo, it's really hidden down there and, and I can't do it. I have to end up getting a little coin out or something. I just can't, because I've got no fingernails, I can't grip it now. For you ladies, that might not be a big issue. For, for a men who like to have our nails short, it's a bit of a pain, to be honest. Um, so, I mean, in terms of build quality, that's it. Um, in a minute, we'll go through some of the features. Thank you. Okay, welcome back. Um, I'm just gonna talk through a couple of the differences between these three flashes. Um, just some of the features that I will test later on but um, also the, the what I see is the main differences between the flash because they all at the end of the day if you want an on-camera flash um, and just to bounce stuff off your camera um, then they're, they're all pretty good none of them will do a bad job you know um, you just pop it on and, uh, and they all do the same sort of job um, there are a couple of differences but like I mentioned earlier then they're, they're not massive um, when you're using on camera um, I guess first of all let's let's talk about the price I mean the Nikon, unsurprisingly, is the most expensive. That's um, in the UK. That's three hundred and thirty-nine pounds, um, which is a, a lot of money. 
um, or I think in the if you're from the US, that's more like five hundred and forty something dollars. Um, a lot of people will argue you get what you pay for, um, but then over the last few years, the prices of speed lights have come tumbling down as more and more companies have entered the market. Um, Yongnuo is obviously the most established now. Um, that, that 568 comes in around about 70 pounds, I think, or uh, about 100 dollars, something like that. Um, and you can get them pretty much from um, Amazon, eBay mainly. Um, I believe they do have a supplier now in the US, I can't remember which one it is, um, because one of the bugbears, as I mentioned earlier, was, um, was support. So you might pay a little bit more if you can get it from a US dealer, but um, uh, at least you know you can return it if, if something happens to it. The Shani is um, a little bit more expensive than the 568, um, but uh, still a damn sight cheaper than the 910. This is the SN version. Um, so it's got a couple of extra features on there um, compared to the the older N version uh, that without the S. Um, the N version comes in at sixty pounds, which what what's that nowadays? Um, Ninety dollars, something like that. ridiculously priced, really for for what you get. It's almost throwaway money. Um, the SN version, which is what this one is, is slightly more. It, that that's coming in at about at the moment on eBay. You, you're looking at ninety three pounds. Which okay, it's you know relatively speaking, it's fifty percent more than the N version, um, and you know it's not well. It, it is more than the the five six eight as well. It, you know, it's about twenty quid more, um, but there is a couple of features on there that I, I do like on the SN. Um, like I mentioned before, it comes with the external battery pack. Um, and um, I do like the build quality more. You know, I, I like the wheel more here than the the, the the like the joypad. Um, the build quality I think thinks better. Um, and it comes with the master commander mode um, of the a bit like the 910. So if I just wake it up, hold on a minute. Um, how do you wake it? It's gone in standby. One sec. Uh, there you go. Turn it back on. Um, on this one. So if you look here, I don't know if you can see that properly, um, it comes with a very similar master commander mode, which just allows you to control three remote flashes and have it on camera. Um, that is um, a very interesting feature for me. Uh, and if you use the Nikon creative lighting system, then uh, fantastic. Um, you know, this is um, a way of controlling remote flashes without having to spend the vast amounts on the the original Nikon. The reason why I'm interested in it is um, I used to use the Nikon 622s a lot and pair it with the 568. Um, uh, when, when using on off-camera flash, sorry, um, one of the things I like to do, of course, is have remote flashes. Now, the problem with um, when I, the setup I was using, so I'd have one or two remote flashes, typically the 568s, um, then you wanted to control the power output. Now, um, until they brought the TX unit out, the only way you could control it was to use uh, a 910 in master commander mode. You just um, pop that on top here. Um, and then you could use the buttons to sort of choose what options you wanted and, um, and so on and so forth. Um, and then, oops. Um, and then you could control the manual power or TTL um, for the on-camera flash as well as up to three remote groups. Fantastic. Um, the downside, of course, is the cost. And um, if you put the Yongnuo on top, then you couldn't do the same thing. You There is some complicated button presses that you could do so you could sort of press two of these buttons and one and change the power output that way but it was so complicated that nobody and I don't mean I know anybody who, who's ever done that um, now if the Shani works with the 622 and we'll, and we'll test it in a few minutes then that means effectively that um, I can do exactly the same job without the SB910 anymore and for people getting started um, in off-camera flash, this really brings down the cost overall. So for the price of um, a, a 910, you could buy a couple of um, shiny speed lights um, and a set of Yongnuo triggers um, and still have money left over. Now, 
I have to say that at this moment in time, um, Shani are saying that they don't officially support the Young Nuo uh, triggers anymore. And I think that's because recently Young Nuo did a firmware update which broke compatibility. Um, now, some the cynic inside me um, wonders if they did that on purpose, but um, I'm sure they didn't. Um, the 568s, of course, are by Young Nuo, so you would expect those to be compatible. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll give it a, a test in a minute um, and, and see which works and, and what doesn't. Um, I'm trying to think what, what other things to talk about on this. Oh, the other useful feature that I, I quite like, and it's one of those, once you have it, you, you think, oh, that's really useful, and um, you, you grow to really like it. Um, here you see off, lock, and on. Um, what the Shani has, and uh, the again the Yongnuo doesn't, is the ability to lock the display settings. So you, you lock it, and whatever settings you've dialed in, you, you can't change it anymore. Um, and this is really useful for when you you're bimbling about with the the camera um, attached to a strap, like I often do. And, and sometimes you accidentally press the button when it's bumping against you, um, and, and you change the settings. Um, have been able to lock the settings in um, just comes in really useful sometimes. Um, so that's it in terms of features. Um, and okay, what we'll do next is we'll set it up and do a quick power test. Okay, right, okay, what we've done is we've set up all three flashes here um, on some Young Nuo triggers. Um, why the Young Nuo? <laughs> Frankly, because those are the only triggers I've got. Um, so, what I've done is I've set them all to full power. Um, at 105 zoom and the reason why I've set it to 105 really is just to make it dump as much power as, as I can um, and then see which one takes the longest to recycle. Um, now I'm going to guess it's going to be the SB910 a little bit just because I think that's a little bit more powerful but we'll, we'll test the actual power output later. Uh, right now I just want to see which one recycles the quickest. Um, I mean in the real world how often will I do full power dumps, probably not that much unless I'm outdoors um, using a softbox or something. But it's a useful comparison, so um, let, let's give it a go. Let's just, uh, that one's just gone to sleep, so I'll just wake it up just to make sure. Okay, right, okay, one, two, three. Okay, so the shiny one, I think, just then, um, by a tiny bit. And the young new old by a tiny bit. There's virtually no difference. Um, they're all recycling um, roughly at the same pace, really. Um, like I said, the Nikon's ever so slightly slower, but that's not. That might be just because it it, it, it is able to output more power. But we'll test that. Um, the, all all the batteries are the same. I've fully charged them. Um, they're. Um, just rechargeable batteries I bought from uh, IKEA, believe it or not, um, just because they were cheap. Um, and I didn't have three sets of any loops, so I've just used three sets of um, IKEA batteries, all freshly charged. So, yeah, I think, um, I mean, you can't really grumble with a recycle speed like that. That's what's that, like three seconds? One, two, three. Yeah, they're all three seconds. Um, so, I don't think, I don't really have a, a, a yeah, I, I don't really know what to say about it. There's no real clear winner to me. They're, they're all just as good. Okay, so uh, what we've got here now is I've just pushed all three flashes close together because um, what I want to do is just test the power output with my Sirconic light meter um, just to give it um, you know, a, a, a proper test because I can't tell which is the most powerful without a light meter. Um, so I'm just gonna stand basically where the camera is um, and then I'm just going to trigger it with the uh, TX unit. Um, I'm going to just change groups, so it'll take me a couple of seconds to change each group. Um, and um, But I'm always going to be at the same distance. Um, the power settings are the same, it's set to full power flash at, um, at 105 zoom. So, okay, so first of all, we will do the Yongnuo. Um, so, yeah, one, two, three. Okay. And that's registering uh, F90. Don't know if you can see that. Okay, so now let's change it to 
the um, it will be the chamois next. Okay. One, two, three. And that's identical at F19. And let's try the um, the Nikon. Okay. One, two, three. Ooh, that's interesting. The um, the Nikon's given exactly the same, F19. So, I mean, if that's the case, um, that means that the all three power outputs are the same, um, and the Young Nuo and the Nikon are slightly quicker. Um, I'm I'm actually surprised at that. I think what I'll do is I'll just do the test again, but this time I will um, just zoom it out to 35 mil and uh, just to be thorough, really. But uh, I am surprised at that. Okay, um, I've turned the flashes around um, and set them to manual power at. Um, 35 mil zoom head, uh, so they're all pointing the same direction, yeah, pretty much. Um, what I'm going to do is use the Siconic light meter again to just test the power output, um, see whether it makes any difference at all. Um, so I'm going to try and make sure I get it from the right position just to make sure that I'm always getting the same similar sort of reading. So the Young Nuo first, this is the 568, one, two, three. I'll do that again because I heard the zoom head go, but it shouldn't make a difference. Okay, that is coming up at F13, I don't know if you can see that properly. Okay, now let's change that to the Shani next. Uh, okay, power and one, two, three, go. Okay, that's slightly, a tiny bit more at F16. And let's see what the uh, Nikon does. And that's F13 as well. Okay, so there's, there's literally nothing in it. They're probably just as powerful. Um, the Shani gave us ever slightly more power. Let's just retest that just in case it was a one-off. Uh, one, two, three. Yep, it's giving out F16 still. Um, so at 35 mil, it pumps out a tiny, tiny bit more power, but there's nothing really in it. Um, you know, it's not like one flash is uh, terrifically more powerful than the others. Okay, so what we've got here is we've got my uh, model bride and groom set up in the middle, rather attractive um, looking bride and groom, if I may say so myself. Um, and, and as you can see on the left there, I've got the Shani uh, mounted on top of the 622. Um, all it is at the moment is it's set to TTL mode. Um, all I'm really interested to see is whether it exposes um, correctly or not. Okay, so I'm just gonna focus in and one, two, three. Okay, that's pretty good actually. Um, let me just see what happens when I swap it with the Yongnuo. Let's turn that off so it doesn't affect the exposure. Okay, and we'll repeat the test. Just do a test flash first, make sure it's working. Yep, that works. Okay, okay, let's try again. One, two, three. Okay, um, I mean, I, I, I can't really show you on the camera, so what I'll do is I'll post them to the website later um, and you can read it, but I don't know if you can see it or not, but basically the exposure is near as damn it the same. Um, any difference really there is maybe, I've, in fact I have, I've put the Young Neo ever so slightly forward, so um, that might be explain why there's a ever so slight difference in overall exposure, but otherwise they're as near as damn it. What I'll do as well is um, I'll just try and uh, move the zoom manually, and, sorry, on the TX unit, and see whether it responds to that. Now, you would expect the Young Nuo to do it. Let's change that to 105. Um, yep, there you go. You can hear the zoom head move. And if I go over here, yep, that's set to 105 now. Let's repeat that with the Shani and see what happens there. 
turn that on. So at the moment that's set to 35. If I now move focus and then, yeah. Yep, that's also moved to 105. So um, yeah, compatibility wise, it looks quite good. Let's just test the flash in manual mode. So this is the Shani. I'm gonna do a full power flash here. I'm on manual, so this should just horribly overexpose my shot. Um, and it does, it's complete white. And I'm just gonna go all the way down to 128 power, just to show that it can change power remotely. And yeah, that's still um, bright, but let's compare that with the, um, the Young Nuo and see just to make sure that the tests are consistent. Okay, so I'll put that back to full power. And okay, this time, one, two, three. Yep, complete white. Um, So yeah, again, it, even at 128 power, it ever so slightly overexposes, but I think that's just because of the distance. Um, it's no different from the the Shani. So yeah, um, I mean, in this case, I think the SN unit seems a lot more compatible with the um, with the 622s than the old N was. Um, one of the things that I found quite inconsistent with the N was um, compatibility with the 622s. Um, I'm just gonna repeat that as well. I'm gonna do the same test with the Nikon just for shits and giggles really. Um, and see what happens. Let me move that set that back to TTL 35 mil. TTL, okay. Oh, hold on. I forgot to set the flash itself at the back here. Mode. Okay, that'll explain why it completely overexposed then. Okay. This time, one, two, three. Ah, interesting. The Nikon actually nails the exposure. No, it doesn't. No, it's a little bit under if I, no, actually it does. If I zoom in, it's actually got the exposure on that quite good. Let me try one more time. Yeah, actually, that, that seems to have done a better job at metering, which I can't explain. Um, maybe the metering system on the Nikon is just a bit better. Let's just try it on this. Just to be doubly sure. Oh, no, 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 probably it. no, actually, it's it's just as good on the Shani now. I think maybe I'm just not quite putting it at the right um, place each time. But um, yeah, um, I mean, again, there's very little difference between the uh, the three flashes. Okay, um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna um, test the Master Commander mode, which is one of the reasons why I really liked the, um, the new SN version. So what I've got here is my Yongnuo 622N mounted on top of my camera, um, my model bride and groom again, um, and I've also got here the SB910 as well. Um, I'm not gonna use the Yongnuo 568 because that doesn't have the mode, so it's a waste of time testing it. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just pop it on um, a TTL mode, which um, on the Shani is um, very easy to get into. You just press the little um, lightning bolt there, which changes it from um, slave mode to TTL mode to master commander mode. And what we've got at the moment is just all on TTL. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. So. Okay, here we go, and that's on, what's it, on 50 mil. Um, okay, here we go. Okay, and that's given a fairly decent exposure. Um, 
Let's compare that to the young girl. Sorry, not young girl, it's the uh, Nikon. So this is the 910. Okay, looking at the difference between the two, literally nothing in it, nothing in it at all. So both seem to have exposed it properly. So what we'll do this time is we'll just adjust the, um, the output a little bit. So now I'm gonna go over by one stop. So if I just change that to, well, how do we do it on this one? Let's have a look, there we go. And mode up. So I'm just gonna go up one EV. Take the same shot. Okay. Um, that doesn't look like it's done anything. That looks exactly the same exposure as TTL, let's go up two stops. Nope, that's given the same exposure. Ooh, interesting. Okay, let's try it with the Nikon. So it's on TTL there. Uh -huh. Select mode. Up EV one stop. Okay, let's try that. Okay, that has made a difference. Okay, so that, that's the first thing um, that I've noticed that um, on TTL mode, I can expose, um, change the flash value going up a stop um, and exposure value up a stop and um, the 910 seems to respond, whereas the Shani doesn't seem to do that. Um, but I mean, to be honest with you, I don't know about you, but um, I never use off-camera flash in TTL mode. Um, I only ever use it in manual mode. So um, what I'm going to do now is change it to manual mode. Sorry, I'm pressing the wrong buttons here. I've forgotten how to change it. <laughs> ah, I'm changing the wrong one. It's B mode I need. It's not seem smooth for me. Ah, nope, I'm pressing the wrong button. There we go. Press it again. So you press the mode. But that's an interesting one. Let, let, me, let me just tell you how to do this because it's a little bit confusing to me. And this is one of the reasons why I always prefer using the TX ones. Um, on the back, you've got the three um, groups as well as the M at the top for the uh, on-camera flash. And to change the power settings um, on this, you have to go to press mode and then it, it tells you which one you are. So when you move the... Um, the dial instead of i mean in my brain at least you would go and uh, start changing the power settings it doesn't it goes up and down so then you have to figure out well how do i get into that to change it from manual to ttl and the answer is actually press t mode button again so every time i press it it goes from ttl to manual to off um, so in this case i'm going to manual um, the subject distance isn't big so i will go uh, set to 128th power Let's just, um, yeah, I'll leave it at that for now. Um, so I'll set it to that. I mean, the flash hasn't changed. It should pick it up if it's compatible. Um, uh, so here we go. Okay, at 128th power, like before, it's, it's actually got a fairly decent exposure value. Um, if I now change the power on that to go up, uh, Let's do it to 32 power. So that should overexpose it now if it's taking signals from the flash. Okay, and it has done. So, yep, so that seems to be responding in manual mode. Let's go all the way up to full power just to really make it completely overexposed. Now, what should happen now, what should happen now is it should be almost pretty much complete white on my screen. Yep, and there you go, oh, full of blinkies. Um, whereas, just show you before, uh, that is, um, 
I can't remember, was it 32 power? I can't remember now. Um, and that was the exposure at 128th. Okay, so as you can see in manual mode, it seems to be working well. Um, not so much in TTL. Well, TTL meter's okay, but not if you uh, change the, expo the flash exposure value. Um, try to I guess that's it really. Um, there's nothing else to really show. Oh, I could compare it to the, um, the, the 910, I guess. Let's just do that. Let's change it. Although, you know, this is Yongnuo and an SB910, so I assume that it will be okay here. And, and I've got the similar issues here. I'm trying to figure out how the hell to change this. There you go. So if I set that to, I don't like these. Uh, nope, that one, nope, there we go. Manual. Set it to 128. Yeah, that's pretty much the same. Go up to 32. Yep, and make it go all the way full power. Yep, pretty much white again. Slightly overexposed, and then pretty much a perfect exposure there. Okay, so we've given all three flashes um, quite a good test. Uh, I thought I'd just wrap up with my thoughts on all three speed lights. Now, um, I think if you're watching this video, then you are either um, just starting out and you want a cheap speed life on camera for flash use um, and maybe perhaps you don't really want to pay the 330 odd pounds or 500 dollars for um, the Nikon that might be too much for you to be able to justify right now um, and you want a budget flash um, and that's fine um, I'm quite a lot of you will probably want um, a flash for off-camera flash work as well. So something which um, you know you can set up multiple flashes, um, and of course, um, if you have to pay five hundred dollars or three hundred pounds for each flash, then the costs quickly mount up. So again, you want something relatively inexpensive, um, and I'm going to talk through why I think, um, well, what I think, which one's best. So I mean, first of all, the Nikon. Um, I have to say. It's been a reliable flash over the years. I've had this for um, a good couple of years now, um, and it, it, it does work. Um, there's no denying it, um, and it, it, generally I do use it for on-camera flash work. Never for off, because um, if I put it on a light stand and someone accidentally knocks it over, I, I'd be very upset. Um, so I have it on camera, and it fires like a champ. The biggest disadvantage, really, like I keep coming back to, is the cost. It's just a very expensive flash and as the power tests show um, there's really not much in it um, I thought it was more powerful but the test we did before showed that it, it was just the same as the young new own and the shani really um, so really if I was either starting out now uh, as a newbie or looking for a cheap and expensive flash um, I, I honestly couldn't recommend the Nikon so I'll put that to one side now the Yongnuo 568 and the SN600 SN, and remember there are two versions of this now, there's the N which is just the Nikon version without the Master Commander mode. Uh, I think it pretty much does everything else, I don't think there's any other difference than that. Um, and then there's the 568. Now the 568 has been out a while, again I've used this, I used to have two of these, um, and, and again they were rock solid. Um, as you can see from that one, I've dropped it, it still fires. Um, I sold the other one because it was easier to sell um, without the front plastic bit missing. And the reason I sold it was because I got the, the, the Shani, in fact it's over here. Um, I just, this is the old end version, I just much preferred this flash to the point where I never was using the 568 anymore, so I got rid of it. Um, so. I guess that tells you something uh, about what I feel about it. Um, the biggest downside of that, and the reason why I ended up keeping this one really, was purely because this the end version never really behaved properly with the 622. Um, I, I know some people online have said that it, it's worked for them, but it never worked reliably for me. Um, but that's not what we're comparing it to. We're comparing it to the SN. 
Um, as I've said before, I prefer the build quality of, of the of the Shani. Um, I think the Young Nuo looks a bit dated now and it's a bit cheap looking. Um, I, I don't like the Joypad as much. The one thing I do like about the Young Nuo is the, um, the, the manual um, power settings are a lot clearer. Um, you know, it's very obvious what power it's on. Uh, if it's sat on a light stand, you can still see it. Um, one of the things I disliked about the Shani, um, if you read my original review on my website, is it's using the Canon uh, uh, power meter thingy. I don't really know what to call it. Um, but basically there's a little guide there that, and you can sort of go up and down and it shows you what sort of power it's on. Um, it's, not, it's not bad, it's just not as clear. Um, but I guess if you're a Canon user, you'll be well used to it because this is really a very close copy to the um, the Canon 600 series. Um, so I've got used to it. Um, I'd rather see that display than that display, but hey ho, for the price, I'm, I'm willing to overlook it. Um, so I guess the question that remains really is which one would I choose? Would I choose the 568 or would I choose the SN? Well, I've already said um, that if price was came into it, um, if it was down to price alone, which one would I choose? The N or the 568? Um, I mean, there's, I think that's about 70 pounds and that's 60 pounds, believe it or not. Um, I'd have to say the Shani. Um, the only caveat is um, if you wanted to use it on the Yongnuo triggers, then that, that doesn't work out for you very well. Um, however, that's the old N version. The SN is about 90 pounds. And that's about seventy pounds, so it's like twenty quid cheaper. Which, you know, it's not a load of money, but um, it is a little bit cheaper. So, based on that, which one would I choose? I think, if I'm honest, um, I would probably go for the Shani. Um, and the reason for that is twofold. Firstly, you've got the Master Commander mode. Um, I mean, like we've just seen, it doesn't seem to be working at the moment. If in TTL mode, if you go up and down exposure value, TTL seem on its own seems to be okay. So um, th that's fine, um, but I don't really use it in TTL mode. I never use it in TTL mode. Um, and most people I know who are doing off-camera flash work use it in manual mode and, and it works in that, okay? So um, that's a big plus to me because what it means is that I no longer need the 910. Um, you know, that works better, uh, full compatibility, but um, it's £300, that's £90, and it does pretty much what I need it to do. Um, you know, it, it's built just as good, uh, it fires, and the only missing feature um, I'd, I never use anyway. Um, so yeah, that's it really. I think if you're just starting out, which one would you choose? The the, the five six eight. Um, if you're a complete newbie on camera flash, which one would you choose? The five six eight or the Shani? Um, again, um, if you are going to go to um, Young Nuo triggers, you may decide that you want the five six eight, and that's fine. Um, but personally, I, I just think this one's a lot better. Um, it, it's just, I think. The acid test for me comes down to, if I'm at a wedding, which flash comes out of the bag. Um, without a doubt nowadays, it's either the Shani or the Nikon. Um, I really don't have a preference anymore. Um, I just go into the bag, whichever flash is the closest, um, I, I grab that one. The Young Nuo doesn't even come out with me anymore. Um, it just sits in a cupboard as my spare flash in case I break one of the others, which sort of gives you an idea. So yes, the SN is 20 quid more, okay? But let's face it, it's not the end of the world. Um, it's got better features on it. Um, you know, I find, you know, the um, the slave mode's certainly easier to get into. You just press the button there. Um, I don't even know how to get into the slave mode on this one. I think somebody said you press the zoom button and hold it down. Um, nope, that doesn't seem to be doing anything for me. Um, it goes into some sort of group mode. Um, so yeah. The, the on off switch is nicer, there's a better locking mechanism on it, um, there's external power on it. I mean, you know, it's 20 quid more, but pff, yeah, it's 90 quid at the end of the day for a fully featured flash, which pretty much does exactly the same as that. Um, if you go for the 5.6a on camera wise, it's probably, you know, not much in it, but you can't do the master mode, you can't plug a battery pack in it, um, I can't get into slave mode, I think there's one somewhere. So all those things um, are the reason why 
if it comes down to it, I would choose the Shani. Price, performance, um, you just can't beat it really. 90 quid for that, I mean, it's just stupid really, isn't it? I mean, how much cheaper do you want them? Um, well, I hope you found this review useful. Uh, I hopefully not rambled on for too long. Um, leave me a comment below and uh, if I can answer your questions, I will. Thank you very much.